What's up everybody, JJ here, and this is a Voron 0.1 that I just built, and it's powered by a pretty special main board that I wanted to cover today. This is the SKR Pico by Big Tree Tech. It's got some pretty big differences from a lot of other main boards in 3D printers right now, and I wanted to cover some of those differences in this video and some of my initial reactions of building it, because it is built, it is running, I have gotten some of the first prints off of there, but it's not calibrated. These prints are not very good at all. This just started running for me this morning, but I wanted to make a little initial reactions of this board and cover some of its features. Little disclaimer to get out of the way, I was sent this for free. I was not paid for this. I told Big Tree Tech that I was building this printer and asked if they wanted to send over a main board for it. So they sent this one over and asked that I make a video talking about it. So this is my initial reactions of it and going over what I've enjoyed setting it up. I will have a more in-depth one after I've really got it calibrated and working well. That'll be a different video and also covering some of the little things about the Voron that I've enjoyed and would do differently for later. So much information to unpack with this build here but right now we're just covering initial reactions of the main board. So I've been trying to think of what sums up this main board as being different from another main board and there's three of them. Size, aesthetics, and the microcontroller in there. Size, it's the same size as a Raspberry Pi computer. It uses the same mounting points as a full-size Raspberry Pi, so you could stack them on top of each other. I used a Pi Zero 2, and it stacks really well right on top of it. I just created some 20 millimeter spacers to give it a little bit of air gap between them. When I built this, I put the Raspberry Pi mounted on top of the main board. I thought I would be more likely to access the GPIO pins, but I can always change it in the future if I want a different configuration. The second big difference of this main board is the aesthetics. It looks way more like a computer's motherboard than a 3D printer main board. Usually you see these main boards are way more function over form. They don't matter what they look like, they're more just trying to pack a bunch of features on there. With this one they put this nice big heat sink on there that really makes it just look really good. They put all the plugs on the side which makes wiring it up actually pretty easy. It's nice to see that the aesthetic changes were also functional changes. The plugs being on the side makes it really low profile and easy to work with. The big heat sink on the top is useful for cooling down your stepper motor drivers. I will be trying to run some tests in the future to see just how good that heat sink is. So let me know if you have any specific questions about tests I should run, let me know in the comments down below. The third big difference that sets this apart from other 3D printer main boards is the microcontroller controlling the whole thing. It's a Raspberry Pi RP2040. This, as far as I know, is the first 3D printer main board that uses that microcontroller. It's a nice, fast, well-featured microcontroller on there, and I'll probably need to run some tests in the future to see just how far you can push it. One downside is it is the first one to use that microcontroller, so there might be some learning issues. I didn't have any issues setting up Clipper on there, it was nice and fast, super easy. That was one thing I was kind of wary about using a new microcontroller, but so far it's working really well. Now I wanted to go through some of my favorite features of this board of just building it and going through it. Some of the wiring, ignore the other parts of this wiring. I didn't know if I would need to go back in there and rewire things, so I didn't cut these motor wires down at all. I left everything with plenty of slack knowing if I crimped something incorrectly, I'd need to trim it, make it even shorter. So wire management comes later with calibration. So the first big thing I liked about this are these side connections. Like I mentioned, it makes it really easy to plug things in from the side, keeps everything nice and low profile. So I could put a door on this if I wanted. These side connectors makes plugging and unplugging things really easy. You're not gonna bump other things as they go in and out. They were just, really easy to work with. The next nice feature of this is the TMC2209 stepper motor drivers. They're underneath this heat sink. So the heat sink really helps them keep them cool. The TMC2209s are nice and quiet. They're just sort of what you would want to upgrade to, but they come stock, which is just really nice to have. Another nice feature I really like on this board is having a built-in fuse. I wish I had that on my other printer. I've blown out some of the circuitry on a cheaper board and I wish there was a fuse that would have saved me in that case. It is a pretty small fuse, but ideally you shouldn't be changing your fuse all that often anyways. So a smaller one is a nice space saving compromise here. Another really nice feature is the USB is USB-C on this, which is really nice for the small size. You're gonna be reaching in there and USB-C just plugs in so easily. It's reversible. It's really perfect for this. I think for 3D printers, it should stick between either USB-C or the larger USB-B plugs. Those are nice and durable, and C is also nice and durable and reversible in this case. One really nice feature this board has that at least my old board doesn't have, and I'm not sure if other boards come with this, but it has a built-in bootloader. So there's two jumper pins in the middle of the board. If you place a jumper on there, 
and then turn on the board, it will enter bootloader mode. When you plug up to your computer through this USB-C plug, it will open like a flash drive on your computer. You can copy over any firmware into that folder and then it will download that firmware and restart the main board and that way you know if it's installed or not. It made it installing Clipper on here just so easy and if I wanted to change to other firmware, it would be really easy to do and that way you're way less likely to brick your main board by putting bad firmware on there if you can always go back to this bootloader mode and change what firmware you have on there. So just a really nice feature. I hope other modern boards have this. I know my old one does not, and I just loved working with it here. Another little feature I wanted to highlight was this built-in plug to connect to your Raspberry Pi. So it's a dedicated plug on the main board, and the board came with this, these jumper wires to jump over to your Raspberry Pi. So that way it's both powering my Raspberry Pi and communicating to it through UART mode. So that way I don't have to use one of the USB plugs, which is really nice, especially on these Pi Zeros that only come with two USBs, and they're micro USB, so otherwise I would need to find something that's USB-C to micro USB. I'd probably have to build a custom cable for that. And so this is just one less thing and it came in the box, nice and easy to work with. But even though they say this is perfectly designed for a Voron 0.1, it's a nice touch that they add in some features that you wouldn't use on a stock Voron, but you might use on other printers. For example, it's got dual Z motor plugs. So for other printers that have dual Z motors, you've got an extra plug there. Other nice features, it's got plugs for a BL touch, even though that's not used stock on this printer. If I want one in the future, those plugs are really nice to have. Also down on the bottom, it's got a plug for connecting a laser on there. So if I ever wanna turn this into a part 3D printer, part laser engraver, it's really nice to have that plug already on there. That's something I didn't know I wanted, but now that it's there, it might be something I tinker with in the future. Another nice feature I didn't really know existed was sensorless homing. It's got easy jumper pins right next to the stepper motor drivers. So you can put jumpers on there and turn on sensorless homing. So that's another thing. I didn't know I wanted it, but now that it's here, it's definitely something I'm gonna have to test out and make a separate video on in the future. But now that I've covered the nice features that I enjoy about it, there are a few downsides to this board I did wanna cover. One downside is there's no SD card for offline printing. It's kind of just a size limitation, I think. Those usually take up a good amount of size. For me, it's not a big deal, but for other people who use that feature, it's not included on this board. It's pretty much made for connecting to a Raspberry Pi and connecting to the internet, which once you've gone to online printing, you're never gonna go back to SD card printing anyway. Another downside that I feel like was something they left off this board was a five volt fan header. Since the stock hot end fan here is a five volt fan. You do need to get five volts from somewhere else. So I did have to split a wire that I'm still getting the fan signal from one of the fan headers, but the five volt rail I have to get from somewhere else on the board. It's not the biggest deal. It's just slightly more complex wiring. But after all the other issues you've probably encountered building a Voron, wiring up a fan slightly differently really isn't the biggest deal. I just thought they might have one since this is sort of the stock configuration for a Voron. Another downside to this board that really makes it perfect for this, but might make it not ideal for other printers is the size. It is really quite small. So you get things like the stepper motor drivers are soldered on. So you can't really upgrade them in the future. It is nice that they are top of the line current ones, but if you ever wanted to upgrade in the future, you would need to fully replace the board. But that about covers the initial features and my enjoyment of building it. It was really easy to build really easy to set up. But now that this printer is built, I still have a lot of calibration and tests to run on it. And so if you have any questions about this main board or tests you want me to run on this board, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. Any specifics of ways I should test it to really give it a good benchmark, let me know. I'd love to hear from you down below. But that about wraps it up for this video. Let me know if you have any more questions on it. If you stuck this far through the video, hitting that like and subscribe button down below really helps me out. Hope you guys have an amazing day out there. Go out there and print something amazing today, and I'll see you in the next one.